name of God, creator, word, and loving spirit. Amen. God is with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Welcome. Welcome to all of you online who are sharing with us on this, the Feast of St. Nicholas, known for two things, punching heretics and giving out presents. Uh, so we're going to celebrate the gift of life, which we have here today, and hopefully there will be no fisticuffs happening. Uh, you are warmly welcomed. Uh, it's good to have you here. Even though we can't see you, we can hear you as you participate in this service. And there's just four of us here in the church, well distanced from one another and uh, looking out for one another and hoping that you stay safe and are um, taking care of yourselves in these uncertain and difficult times. As we begin, we acknowledge that wherever we are from, we are on the lands of many indigenous peoples, but here at St. John the Divine, we are on the lands of the speaking people, the ancient unceded lands of the nations now known as the Songhees and Esquimalt, and that we have a task. We have a journey that we are on, taken in partnership with the indigenous peoples of these lands, a journey of truth-telling, and we pray of healing and ultimately of transformation into a new relationship. In this time of Advent, we are particularly having that sense of anticipation. Many of us have uh, deep senses of anticipation at the moment, waiting day by day for the news that we hear about this pandemic, waiting uh, and wondering what we will be doing in this Christmas season. And as we bring those feelings of expectation, of hope together, we turn to the lighting of our Advent candle. Loving God, you have called us to be your family and to celebrate our life together in worship. We gather now in our church building, our homes and online to light the Advent candle. Blessed are you loving God, creator of the universe, for you have made all things and your creation is sacred. Gracious God, you proclaim your comfort to your people. Help us to hear and see and know that you are God. Help us to know that we are gathered into your arms and gently held. We are your people, the sheep of your flock. As these Advent candles are lit, help us remember that we must turn our hearts to you. Help us to know that we must set aside our folly and embrace the message of your peace and love. Blessed are you, loving God, creator of the universe, for you have made all things and your creation is sacred. Let us draw our prayers together. Almighty God, who sent your servant, John the Baptist, to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah, inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when the Christ shall come again to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before Christ's glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now listen for the word of God in Holy Scripture. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare a way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway 
for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and her arm rules for her. Her reward is with her and her recompense before her. God will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you. Amen. During our Zoom meeting for St. John's Watershed Discipleship Book Study this past Thursday, John, Alistair, and myself discussed some central themes in Chapter 1 themes of colonization, decolonization, rootlessness, and home. How ironic and how fitting I came to discover when preparing this sermon that St. John's Lenten slash Advent book study for chapter one would be such interesting food for thought concerning this Sunday's readings. At some point in each of our lives, and likely multiple points throughout our lives, if we were to take inventory, we would know ourselves to be displaced people. But what comes to mind first when we imagine a community of displaced people? If you are anything like me, my first impulse is to imagine those who have been affected by war, by persecution, or natural disasters. They are the ones forced to leave their homes, whether they are refugees of war or the victims of a hurricane. Their lives have been uprooted. But there is also a displacement that happens within us. Displacement is more than a physical move, a change in location, or the loss of a physical home. The displacement I'm referring to is the inner geography of our lives and the displacement that occurs within us. Have you ever felt out of place or that you were just not in a good place? Or like your life had been uprooted? Have you ever felt disconnected in your marriage, with family or in other relationships? Have you ever felt that your beliefs, values, or worldview no longer fit or sustained you? Have you ever felt homeless even though you have a home? Have you ever felt as if you did not belong or fit in. Those are all forms of displacement. If your life has ever been uprooted or left you feeling like you occupy space, you're not really grounded when you know what it is and you know what it is to be a displaced person. The poet Mary Oliver writes, I don't want to end up simply 
having visited its world. I understand what she is talking about, and I suspect you do too. We don't want to simply live as if just passing through life. We want to be placed. So let me ask you this. In what ways are you living a person? What parts of your life feel uprooted, rootless, or disconnected? What is your displacement? Comfort, comfort my people. Are God's words to displace people? Isaiah first spoke those words to people exiled in Babylon, people whose lives had been uprooted. Those same words come to the displaced people of God today. In some way, the prophetic word is always directed to displaced people. And we long to hear those words of comfort. We want to find our place. More than anything, Displaced people want to be a placed people. But if you listen to John the Baptist in today's gospel, the way home, the way of becoming a placed people is through the wilderness. There is no way around the wilderness. We can't get out of it. We can only go through it. Advent reminds us at every year on this Sunday and next. We so often have an image of the wilderness as empty, barren, and desolate, a place of demons and temptations, a place where the best hope for is to survive. But what if we got it wrong? What if the wilderness is really a place of life and hope, a place of connectedness, a place of finding ourselves and our place. In Mark's account of the gospel, the wilderness is so much more than a testing ground for God's people or a place of exile. The Spirit drives Jesus into the wilderness after his baptism and, yes, he faces temptation. But the wilderness is also the Place where the angels waited on him. It seems that there, that there are temptations there are also ministering angels. Mark reminds us that Jesus often went to the wilderness by himself to pray and to encounter God. The wilderness then is a place of connection to the sacred. It is also a place of rest. Wilderness is the place where we begin to become placed people, residents and connected. And God's desire for us is to have a sense, a deep sense of rootedness, a deep sense of connection to ourselves and to one another. I think that's what the people of Jerusalem and the whole Judean community side understood. That's what they heard in John's cry. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. They leave the city and they leave their homes in the countryside and they go to the wilderness. They too are a displaced people. They are not, however, displaced because they leave Jerusalem and the Judean countryside. They leave because they are already living displaced lives in the city and the countryside. Their movement to the wilderness was not the cause of their displacement, but the symptom of it. Something about John's voice, something about his message about the wilderness said to them, there is more for you than you have now. There is a place for you. And you will only find it in the wilderness. Every movement to the wilderness, that place where the angels minister to us, that place of prayer, that place of rest, of feeding, is an act of repentance. 
And if we've misunderstood the wilderness, then maybe we've also misunderstand, misunderstood John the Baptist and the repentance to which he calls us. John's call for repentance is the movement from being displaced to being placed. A move from occupying a space to taking up residence. A move from being a visitor to becoming a resident. A move from being ungrounded to rooted in depth. And who among us today doesn't need or want that? Who among us isn't looking for our place of belonging, a homecoming, a sense of connectedness and wholeness, a way of life that is authentic and holy? That's the work of the one who is more powerful. The wilderness always holds the promise of the one who is more powerful. And if there's anything displaced people need, it is that one. It can be a temptation to live with the illusion and fear that whoever or whatever has displaced and uprooted us is the most powerful thing in our lives. But John says, no, 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 that's not true. You come to the wilderness and you will find the one who is more powerful. So what would it mean for us to heed the call of John the Baptist? What does the wilderness look like for us, for our Christian community? What is the Jerusalem or Judean countryside that we need to leave behind? Let us affirm the faith of the church. With the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and in the world. Let us pray. Our God speaks tenderly to his people and cares for them as a shepherd cares for his sheep. Let us therefore bring to him our thanks and our prayers for our own needs and the needs of others, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your servant John the Baptist called people to change the way they lived and to prepare themselves for the coming of your Son. Raise up, we pray, prophetic voices in our own time. Enable us to discern the truth which draws us closer to you. We pray for all those who teach, preach, and minister. May they be as fearless in proclaiming the truth as your servant John, and may we be ready to adapt and change in response to their leadership. In the Canadian Church, we pray for Linda, our primate, and Melissa, our metropolitan, the territory of the People Anglican Church and Bishop Lincoln McKinn. Within our diocese, we pray for Anna Greenwood Lee, our Bishop elect, for Ansley, our administrator, and for the Congregation of St. Mary Nanus Bay, 
and their priest, Celinda Cranhoff. I ask your prayer silently or aloud for the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for the communities in which we live, work, and worship. We ask that in our busyness, you will bring us back to a place where we can refocus on you so that with your help, we will reveal your glory in the way we live and serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, our tumultuous world is rife with conflict through the, dis through the dismantling of compassion and empathy by unchecked power and unrelenting greed. In this sacred waiting time, we pray for the leaders of the nations that in all the uneven, rough, rough and unjust places in the world, the way may be prepared for you to bring equality, healing and justice to all your people. I ask your prayer silently or aloud for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our prayer. prayer. Creator God, forgive us when we are ungrateful or when spiritual blindness prevents us from appreciating the wonder of your creation and the endless cycle of nature. Inspire us to follow your example of boundless generosity and empower us to work with you to restore a broken world. I ask your prayers silently or aloud for health and wholeness for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all those in need who are weak and vulnerable. We pray that they will be touched by your gentle tenderness, bringing them comfort and strength, and that you would give your grace to all who offer support. We pray especially for those ill at home or in hospital with COVID-19, and for those listed in our bulletin. Let your loving and gentle kindness surround them all. In our own hearts, in a moment of quiet, I invite you to bring your concerns for the needs of those you know and love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Compassionate God, give rest to those who have gone from our lives to be with you. May they now live the eternal, life eternal and rest in everlasting peace in your presence. Strengthen the bereaved with the knowledge of your loving presence in this their time of greatest need. I invite your prayers silently or aloud for those who have died. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, help us repent of our sins in the silent nights of our souls, that we may feel the approach of your redeeming grace and prepare ourselves for that day when your kingdom will at last be established on earth. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, proclaiming peace and bringing news of joy. The peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Two.
Remember that the gifts that are offered here are symbols of all the gifts which we offer to one another and to God. Gifts of grace and love. And so these symbols remind us also of all that God has given us that we offer back to the divine. So in the name of all of us gathered near and far, let us present these our gifts to God. Let us pray. God, our strength, we are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God is with you. And also with you. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us and all that you have borne for us. In our sharing in this Eucharist, in church or at home, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. A most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. God is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God, the Creator. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, Creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world. But we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold Christ's appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Strengthened to 
do your work as your body in the world through Christ our Redeemer in the power of the Spirit all praise and glory be yours almighty God now and forever Amen gathering our prayers and praises together as Christ taught his friends and longing for the new life of God's reign. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper, supper of the Lamb. Though we receive them spiritually, we are all invited to Christ's table, for all are welcome. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
one body are we. For though we are in many places, we spiritually share one bread. Faithful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call, to turn our hearts and be replaced to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of our living God, Creator, Word, and loving spirit be among you and those whom you love and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite Stephanie to do the dismissal. Let us go in peace to love and serve our loving God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>